Well, good morning. Welcome to Chasing Chunks TV. I'm Johnny Tosh and welcome to Nampanton Reservoir in Loughborough, Leicestershire. Now, two years ago, just before lockdown, I had a guestie on here, did 48 hour session and right on the last morning, I managed to bag a nice uh, 23 pound mirror, I think it was. And if you've not seen that video, then at the end of this video, I'll leave a little thumbnail for you to go and watch. Uh, but since then, I've been on the waiting list to get a ticket on air because I really enjoyed my first session and that guestie. So this place being very popular, it took that all that time, two years, to get a ticket. Thankfully, a couple of months ago, I got the uh, email to say that I've got on the uh, water this year. So I snapped up that ticket and uh, I've been down here twice fished. First time, 48 hour session, just to get some sort of idea of what I'm dealing with, because obviously it's been two years since the last time I've come. I know there's bream in here, I know there's uh, crayfish. So I just wanted to have a little bit of a feel and uh, brought my solid bag set up, put solid bags out, uh, just try and nick a bite and it was obvious that that tactic was totally wrong. It wasn't until seeing the other anglers and there they was going about fishing and catching that I realized that I needed boilies. Thankfully, I had some key bait solutions, maxi nut in the car. So on the last evening, I uh, spotted out the contents of the bag and managed to nick a bite on the last morning as a blank saver. So that was really, really appreciated. And uh, for the 48 hours on there, you know, I'll take anything. But a couple of weeks after, I was in the area and I thought, well, while I'm over here, I might as well just come and do an afternoon and an overnight session. So brought a bit of bait with me throwing stick some boilies out and manage again to nick one on the evening uh, the fish moved off me pushed down to this end of the lake and unfortunately I didn't get another take but I've been waiting to get back down here and I've managed to get a 72 hours out on the bank and give it a proper good session it's ain't going to be a water that I'm going to be fishing regular it's going to be a water that I'm going to be dropping on and off. It's also got winter form, so I may have a couple of day sessions over the winter as well. But at the moment, right now, I'm looking forward to uh, dropping on here, putting a couple of rigs out, creating a baited spot with boilies, and uh, trying to catch some of the A-team or some of the chunks out of here. So I'm going to bring the cameras with me. Hopefully you'll enjoy it and hopefully we'll have an enjoyable session together have a look at some of the baits and talk a little bit more about why i've joined this and uh yeah roll into the uh session and we'll talk a little bit more but for now i'm going to get this uh, barrel loaded i've had a walk round. i'm going to be fishing on this left hand bank up towards the top because i've already seen a few fish we've got the wind going to be pushing in on the south easterly which is pushing onto that bank so it's looking pretty promising. There's only me on apart from a match angler at the moment. So it's pretty quiet. The first couple of times that I've come, obviously the, the ticket was new. So it was pretty busy, but it's died down a little bit. And hopefully that will uh, help me with my uh, session out. So let's get this battle loaded. Let's get around there and I'll pick the camera up when we're into the session and got the house up and uh, Enjoy the next 72 hours. See you later, guys.
So I've just cast my marker float out there. 16 wraps out onto a nice clear area out in front of the swim. It's just positioned in between two trees on the opposite bank that I can use as a marker in the night if I need to cast back out. But I'm going to pop this marker float up and show you where I'm fishing. There you go. Now I don't use marker floats for 99% of my fishing. I use a bare lead. But if you're putting out baits with a throwing stick, it's nice to have some sort of line and something to spread your boilies around rather than just putting them out there willy-nilly. You can get your eye in and you can hit that sort of distance every single time. Oh look, the seagulls now it's coming. All about the rhythm, cause it's all about the rhythm. There's only so many in the canal. third rod to go out is just going out just off the margin down to this left hand side while I've been putting the rods out putting a bit of bait out there's a couple of fish that's rolled down here so it would be uh, silly of me not to cover that and put a rod on it for a few hours I know the closer it comes into this bank the more likely you are to be crayed so I'll probably give it yeah, there's cop. I'll probably give it a couple of hours and if nothing happens then i'll bring it in and reset it so let's uh let's just flick it out see how it gets on put a bit of bite around that
Half. Little calf. So I wasn't expecting the fish so early on, but nice little stocky for the start and I'll take that for the short time that I've been here. So onwards and upwards, let's drop it back in and uh, put this rod back out. This one come out on just on the margin down the left hand side, just on a little bit ASM bottom bait with a few freebies around it. Right. Well, again slightly bigger, fish number two, and this one come out over the baity spot out at 16 wraps. So more than pleased with that, and it's a little bit bigger than the last one, so hopefully we're on that upward scale. So I'm just keep topping up that swim, just keep throwing, sticking a couple of baits out as and when I can, when the gulls decide to move off. But yeah it's definitely working and we're just definitely starting to top up that swim and get our results so let's get this back Result. well nine o'clock on the evening just about to start to chill out for the evening ahead we are two fish up and I couldn't have asked for a better start for the first 12 hours down here. The rods have been recast out, put fresh bait out. Uh, I've also used the throwing stick and also the spot as well, just to try and deter, deter the seagulls from getting most of the bait. Uh, but at the moment, they seem to have disappeared. So what I'm gonna do is put a little bit more bait out of the area. And I'm just going to kick back and chill out for the evening ahead. It's looking promising. The wind, which I said was going to start to push in my favour during the night, has just started to come on on a south easterly. So we've got wind pushing right onto this bank now. 
so it's looking really good for a bite during the night and or in the morning so until then I'm just going to chill out kick back relax and wait for good times so good night guys and I'll see you very shortly hopefully with a chunk Well that is a lovely 20 pound plus mirror just coming to the short rod over some ASM hardened hooker and the first 20 of the trip absolutely brilliant made up with this one especially so early on into the trip we've had two fish in the doubles and we're into the twenties, so yes. Right, let's slip this back. Let's get back into the sack. And see if anything else turns up for the night. Wiped out the other rods, to be fair, so I'm gonna have to uh, redo them. But more than welcome with a fish like that. Brilliant. Good morning, half past five in the morning, I'm all about and chasing and as you've probably just seen I've reset all three rods. Reason being is that oh 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 is that a voice? Behave. Behave. Josh just wants a photograph with you. And that is fish number four. Definitely effort equals reward with this one. Getting up the first lights and putting the fresh baits on. Give a real good account for yourself this one. Just didn't want to come in and I enjoyed every minute of the fight. Lovely. Right. Let's put it back.
how this one's fighting me like anything. Off the long spot, maxi nut. What a fish. <laughs> Proper old warrior, this one. Right, let's just spin it round. Show you the other side. And just send it on its way. I can't fizzing over me as we speak. So that's two off that spot this morning. And nice result. Right, let's slip it back. Day. wasn't expecting a run in all honesty I just recast the rod after having a massive liner and I picked up into it nothing on the end put this rod out five minutes later that is the result so uh, takes the tally up to six another one off the baited area so it's starting to rock it's starting to uh, produce quite well and slip this one back and top up the area and hopefully a few more to come. It's got a little bit of park care on it, it's just got a little bit of a mark on it to take the tail. Probably from this morning. So you're joining back at half past one. I've literally just slipped that 20 pound mirror back and I thought I'd talk about bait and bait application and some of the things that I've done on this trip to get myself a bite. I know I'm going to get asked about it, I get asked about it every single time and every time I'm out on the bank I don't really talk about bait because I tend not to worry about it too much. I'll leave that to the lads down at the Key Bait Solutions. Uh, factory but I know that these baits will catch literally anywhere that I put it. I'm more interested in where I put that bait rather than the bait itself because you know it's a fantastic um, bait down at the uh, factory and I know every single one of them will catch your fish. But on this one I have tended to go with two different types of bait. I've gone with a, the nutty sweet approach and I've also gone with the fish meal approach which is the ASM and the maxi nut. Um, both have been glugged 
in the feed steam stimulant um, the reason why I've done that because I said earlier that I realized last time I come that the bait was smelling a silt when you brought them in because of that I've basically glugged my baits a couple of days beforehand uh, in the feed steam stimulant because when you put these baits out as they are if you've got a little bit of a barrier on there of smelly uh, glugged up um, feed stimulant then it's going to take a little bit more time for that silt to get into them boilies and turn them into a foul smelling silty smell there is another way you can actually air dry them and then rehydrate them and use the uh, feed stimulant but on this one I decided just to glug it quite uh, often throughout the couple of days where they was thawing out and uh, yeah I waited for them to dry put a little bit more on waited for them to dry and creating that barrier definitely helps with keeping your baits uh, smelling good on the lake bed uh, exactly the same with the ASM the ASM is a little bit more potent well it's actually a friggin stinks uh, so it is a little bit more effective on waters like this because obviously it's so potent that it's gonna keep giving off that's them smells and them attractors for longer so I've had fish on both in all honesty and basically that's it I've got the hardened hookers in the matching um, ASM that I'm putting out and then on top of that on both of them I'm using a little wafter just to cock it up a little bit and make it like a snowman rig and I'm doing that on both uh, rigs and that's what's been basically giving me the fish nothing nothing technical nothing nothing difficult uh, like I say it's all about worrying where you're putting that bait rather than um, worrying about whether the bait's going to catch because it will so onwards and upwards and hopefully you're taking something from this uh, but yeah let's see if we can get a few more fish on the mat for this video blog See you in a bit guys, I'll update you a little bit later on. So you join me back at six o'clock. Rods have just gone out for the evening, all fresh bait on each one. And I'm just about to put some spot full of uh, maxi nut over my uh, baited area for the evening ahead. As you, if you remember, I had a couple of fish yesterday evening. So getting these rods out at this time, making sure that all your baits out there he's going to pay a little bit later going on and uh, hopefully fingers crossed we'll have one the lake is pretty busy so whether that makes any difference to angling pressure i don't know but we'll see as we go forward uh, my good friend jace has uh, come down as well who joined at the same time as me also from the same area as wolverhampton so a little bit of a social going on as well uh, but yeah, I'm quietly confident in my spots and our bait's been going out there for uh, the past 36 hours so fingers crossed all comes good later on tonight or first thing in the morning obviously we've got to get through this evening as well so let's get this bait out and let's get fishing for the evening ahead
Well, we get another one finally this morning after waiting, obviously through the evening, through the night, managed to nick one this morning. And that was from the rod that I put long this morning, uh, which was literally took down on the marginal shelf and just pushed it out a little bit. And an hour or so, it was away. Nice result from an early morning change this morning. So that rod's just been cast out before I got this fish out. Just left it in the uh, landing net. And we are fishing on all three rods again. I keep getting liners on the middle rod because I've seen a few fish over that long spot of 16 wraps. But yeah, more than pleased with that. Right, let's take it back. Well, 48 hours in, another 24 hours left to go. Unfortunately, we lost one about an hour and a half ago to a hook pull, which uh, was pretty sour, but it happens and uh, you just got to get on with it and realise that, you know, your baiting strategy is working. The other two rods, which are out on that baited area, unfortunately, nothing's come to them this morning. I'm definitely going to be holding back on the bait from going in there. There's enough bait out there, but I am definitely going to stick on keeping my rods in situ over that for the next 24 hours. Obviously, I'll be bringing them in and changing the hook baits, putting them back out, but that'll be every, I don't know, four hours or so. So until then, Obviously, I'm going to uh, sit back, just chill out. I think this new wind pushing down has pushed them fish down towards Jace. He's definitely in the prime position down there. But I'm expecting that once that wind's been blowing down there for a few hours, then fish will back off and hopefully find the way in front of this swim again. See the old fish now and again rattling just down to the left. Not so much down. Uh, in front of me at the moment, but I think we are definitely in the swings at the moment So I'll update the video blog a little bit later But for now kick back and see if we can uh, add to the tally. See you later Well, you join me back at nine o'clock. A lot quieter today as in regards to fish showing. And the only thing I can put that down to is the angling pressure that we've got on at the moment with all these extra anglers that have turned up, casting, making disturbance and putting bait out. It's definitely made a difference to how the fish act. I have seen the odd fish roll out there, I've seen fish roll out over my area. So I think when we're going to get a bite is definitely under darkness. When you've got angling pressure, you always seem to find that the fish are a little bit more encouraged to feed under dark. And obviously with anglers becoming a little bit more quieter not casting so much then that's going to be the time when you're going to get the bites but again I'll get up at first light in the morning do exactly what I did this morning and change my hook baits over for fresh baits and put them back out on the spots first thing in the morning make that little bit of effort and hopefully we'll reap the rewards again for me doing that so from me 
Good night. Fingers crossed. I'll come back to you very shortly with a chunk. Good night, guys. Well, good morning. Join me at five o'clock in the morning and I'm up out to get these rods changed over for this morning's period up until about 11 o'clock when I start to uh, reel in the last rods to get off home. Uh, so yeah, really quite a night last night. We've had uh, rain which is uh, happening right now, that's why I've got my uh, wet gear on. So yeah, not too sure what's happened to be fair. I had fish during the night, but it wasn't raining. But as soon as that rain started to uh, come on this morning, then it all went really quiet. Right, let's get these rods in. Let's get some fresh bait out. See you. Hopefully you can see that that's going out. Three bait stringer, double hardened hooker, ASM, and little PVA stick. Simple. Right, so that's me done for the morning period. And then rods are back out rocking on the spots on fresh hook baits. So, fingers crossed that we, uh, we can get one like uh, the other mornings uh, while I'm slowly packing down this morning to go for 11 o'clock. Would be nice, wouldn't it, just to uh, have a couple more or just even one more on the bank for my final few hours down here. Ooh. So I'd say a couple of fish roll and one bam went away. Probably a bream the way it's coming in. <gasps> Set me out.
Say something that, that rod you've just put out, that's gonna go again. Is it? Mate, I've just seen a fish come straight out over the top of it. Another one for the telly. Uh, and out on the, the shorter rod again. So I'm casting out this morning. There's some fresh bait out there. And we've just seen some more fish well over the area, so I'm eager to get this back. If anything else turns up a couple of hours of down here. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. He's that. <laughs> Seen that net then, John. Come on, all him in. I'll get this rod back out. Gone the wrong way, John. That's it. We're in. We're in. We're in. Steady, steady. Well, coming up like buzzies this morning. All through the night, quiet. First thing in the morning, another cracker. We've still got a few showing over. Well, unfortunately, it's time to bring these rods in and bring this video blog to an end. I've enjoyed my time down here at Nampanton Reservoir and I couldn't have asked for a better session than catching all them fish and uh, having some absolute stunners on the mat for this video blog. My apologies again over the cinematic video. I'm not too sure how it's going to come out, uh, whether I've caught enough video to uh, put it in but I'll only find out that when I get home and start to edit it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely uh, been a struggle doing this video blog, especially with, with having the uh, camera uh, having a misfit and uh, deciding it wanted to uh, throw up errors on it, which I've got to go back home and sort out. But who cares when you've had a session that I've had. So if you want to find out any more about Nanta Panton Fishery, all the links will be in the description below and if you uh, want to watch the first session that I ever did down here a couple of years ago at the end of this video there'll be a thumbnail so from me it's a bish bash bosh keep it tosh wet nets tight lines see you on the next video guys bye bye for now